Good morning class and welcome to science. Today is Wednesday, May 6th. Let's get started. So today we're going to be talking about waves and currents. You should open up your ultimate science notebook to this page or find it on my Google Classroom. Um, my expectation is that you're following along in your ultimate science notebook or on a spare sheet of paper. <clears throat> so let's get started. Heat travels in three ways. So heat is a type of energy. Energy can travel in a bunch of different ways. There are three specific ways that heat or thermal energy can travel. The first is called radiation. So all of these involve heat, but this is the kind when energy is traveling in ways from a source like a sun um, or a campfire in the picture that I've shown up here. Conduction is when heat is traveling through solids. So for example, if you're heating a pot on the stove, you might have noticed that if you touch the outside, it's really, really hot. And that's because that heat is traveling from the boiling water uh, and from the stove underneath to that metal part and it's conducting throughout the whole thing. When you put a metal, when you put a metal pot on top of your stove, it's not just the bottom, right, that gets really hot, it's the whole thing, and that's because of conduction. Finally, there's convection. This means that energy is traveling through liquids and gases, and this is the kind that we're gonna focus the most on today. This is like when you have hot cocoa, and you put like, um, you put it in a glass. If you put like a marshmallow or something in it, that heat will slowly travel to that marshmallow through the liquid. So, uh, when we talk about currents and we talk about the conveyor belt of the ocean, I think a really good visual is the Finding Nemo movie when they go into the great, um, I forget what they call it in the movie because it's not, I, I don't believe it's a real scientific name, but they are traveling in this current and it makes it easier for these animals to travel by and the water I believe is warmer in the movie. So that's kind of like how our oceans work. Ocean currents are like a great conveyor belt. Remember, anything in my notes that's in all capitals, you need to make sure you're filling in the blank. Because temperature and salinity affect the density of water, these things move in a giant conveyor belt, moving the ocean currents. Thermal line currents are the movement of salt and heat. So I want to just take a second for us to kind of understand this in a basic level. My expectation is not that you understand the whole world or memorize those specific patterns. But let's imagine we have our little globe here. Okay, shocker, the belly button of the earth, as I like to refer to it, is the equator. It's the part that sticks out in the middle. Okay, and I think we know that the equator is gonna be warmer and our poles, the North Pole and the South Pole, like where the penguins, Santa Claus, and polar bears live, is gonna be colder. So warmer, colder. Colder, warmer, colder, colder. Everybody got that so far? Great. So what happens is, just like we showed with our hurricane density lab in the previous video, or on Thursday rather, our currents here work the same way. And so let's say we start off at the equator. Now there's no continents in the way, so this is a completely arbitrary drawing of how this conveyor belt works, but it will kind of get the idea across. So as something is heated, what happens to it? it rises, right? So this water is rising. As it hits the poles, however, what happens? It gets colder. And when something gets colder, it sinks. And the same thing happens again. It goes back to the equator, it rises, and then it gets cooler, and then it sinks. Now in the real world, there are continents in the way, right? If the water doesn't just get to float aimlessly across the earth. So for example, if I erase my previous fake currents, I'm gonna add in the fake continent of Awesomeville. Let's pretend this is a potato continent. So if our water is um, rising, it will have to interact with that continent. So in this case, it might go around the continent and then it gets colder, so then it's dropping again and it might follow all the way. So it just kind of shows how water moves and how it changes based on those um, thermal line currents. Some, the reason we call it a great conveyor belt is because just like that thing that's at the grocery store that spins like this and moves your groceries along, the conveyor belt or these thermal line currents that are in the ocean move fish and animals and heat energy and all this kind of stuff. So imagine those animals being like that grocery store and the heat and the salinity and all this stuff being like at the grocery store and it's slowly moving along because of this difference in heat and coldness and salinity. 
there are two types of ocean currents. So there are deep ocean currents, those occur deep within the ocean, and there are surface ocean currents, those that occur on the surface of the water of the ocean. So just like groundwater is below the ground and surface water is above the ground, deep ocean currents are deep in the ocean and surface currents are on the surface of the ocean. Mind blown, right? It's so hard. So for now, we're gonna do this Tides Interactive Notebook. Um, so you'll see this big circle and the sun uh, and the moon and the earth. Um, as you might've seen from Despicable Me, which I'm gonna try to remember to post that video today, uh, waves and these currents are also affected by the position of the moon. It's not just this heat and cold, heat and cold, heat and cold. Um, it, or also it's affected by more than just the continents. It is affected by um the moon because the moon is a big gravitational force and so that big circle on the left is representing how the moon is pulling on the earth's gravity and so because of that it's really crazy to think about if the moon is here and the earth is here the moon is actually just slightly shifting the water just a little bit towards the moon and so that causes the change that we see in tides it's not a perfect explanation but it's the most simplified explanation i can give on this call so your um finished interactive notebook should look like this with the earth in the middle of that gravitational field and the moon pulling that water do 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 thank you so much for joining me everybody and i will see you for language arts